Hey guys, welcome back. Infinix 05, or as I call it, the poor man's iPhone X. Now, a lot of thought went into that statement. One, the name is pretty similar, Infinix, iPhone X. But jokes aside, there were a couple of things which I found in 05 which might have been seriously influenced by Apple's latest installment. I'll come to them one by one as the review unravels. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and unbox the whole goodie pack I got at the official launch. First off, there is a diary. Surprisingly, there are no lines in any of the pages, so it's more like a scribble book. Next, there is a t-shirt. It says 05 optical zoom. This is one point they are really emphasizing on, so it better be good. Next, there is a ballpoint pen. And finally, there is the phone. Brand new, sealed. On the back, it has all the key features mentioned above the color details and barcodes. Inside the box, we have the phone, well protected on both sides. In fact, on the front, it has a removable thin cardboard, kind of a sticker, below which there is a neat screen protector already installed. There is a plastic sticker on the back as well, on the matte red finish. And there is a separate protector over the cameras and flash section. Moving on, below the tray we have the warranty card and there's a paper encasing with the SIM tray pin, a user manual and a cleaning cloth. Below that we have a silicon case which fits in pretty snug. Next up we have the charging brick, a Type-C quick charging cable alongside a micro USB to Type-C adapter. A pair of headphones with the standard 3.5mm audio jack. That's it for the contents, now let's have a look at the phone. As I had mentioned earlier in my preview video, this is a pretty big phone, same as an iPhone 8 Plus or any Plus for that matter, but not as heavy, it is slightly lighter than the iPhone 8 Plus. If you remember Elephone C1 Max which I reviewed earlier, this is as big and 30 grams lighter than that, but with a little more rounded corners, very similar in design to the iPhone Plus model. It comes in three colors, the gold and red versions have a white front and the sandstone black is black back and front. The 05 Pro is exactly the same as 05 except for two things. One, it comes in 128 GB instead of 64 and second, it has golden lines around the edges which gives it a nice premium look over the black body and the Pro only comes in one color and that is black. That's it, there are no more differences in the 05 and the 05 Pro. On the front we have the speaker, a 16 megapixel selfie camera, the proximity sensor and a flash. There are no buttons on the bottom. They have been integrated into the screen just like HTC or Samsung. Even though it wasn't really required since there is quite a lot of unused space down here. There is a thin line of plastic between the glass screen and the metal back which stops it from giving it a very flush look and uh, it might cause the color to yellow out a little from continuous handling. The back is full metal with a matte finish. The red is an elegant dark red and the camera's panel being black gives it a beautiful contrast. It also has this carbon fiber sort of pattern which overall makes the phone look really nice. Here we have the dual cameras, the flash and the fingerprint sensor. On the bottom it has the headphone jack, microphone, speaker and a type C charging port. The power and volume buttons are on the right side below the SIM tray which can hold two micro sims and there is an additional micro SD memory card slot on the left side so you don't have to compromise on one of the sim cards. The screen is 5.98 inches 2.5D Full HD 1080p LTPS display Corning Gorilla Glass 3 with a very crisp and vibrant spectrum. It is running on Android 7.0 Nougat and XOS 3.0 Hummingbird user interface. And it has some really interesting features which I would like to point out for example, every time you wake up the phone, you see a different wallpaper with a coat. This is called the magazine wallpaper function or something. The home screen stays whatever you set it at, but this gives a creative touch to the phone just like Microsoft's Bing.com. No one actually uses it as a search engine, but people really love to go there and you know look at the pictures and get some info about the interesting pictures they put out there every day. Since the screen is pretty big and some parts on the screen are usually out of reach from one hand, so you can switch to one hand mode from the control center, which is not very new but definitely nifty. 
There's also the option of screen recording, which is a clear influence from iOS 11. You can run two apps simultaneously in the multi-window mode, which should be a must for such a humongous screen size. Along with Google Play, it has two more stores called Palm Store and Aha Store, from where you can also download games and apps. There is also the multiple account settings, which I talked about in my previous video. Basically, this allows you to access an additional account for WhatsApp, Facebook, etc., games and other apps as well. This is very similar to Parallel Space, which you find on Google Play, but they have integrated it into their OS. You don't have to download a third-party app to do that. Once you create an X account, you can also get free cloud storage on X Cloud and also get access to X Club, which is like a local Facebook for Infinix users. There's an icon on the home screen called Cleaner and it shows how much RAM is being used by the background applications. You can simply tap on it to free up space by stopping unwanted activity to make your phone run faster. Additionally, there's a folder called the Freezer. You can drag any app into it to freeze it completely so you can run heavy apps and games without falling short of memory. Not to forget, they also have a dedicated wallpaper and themes collection called X-Theme, so you don't really have to look for third-party apps for HD wallpapers. And even fonts. You can instantly change the font of your phone by simply downloading it and applying it from the app itself. No need to go to settings. Another important application is the security app. You can restrict access to apps and configure settings like remote lock and erase in case you lose the phone, along with the phone finder feature powered by Google. Looking at all of this, I have to say a lot of work has gone into designing the whole user interface and I am seriously impressed with it. Some of the features can be considered bloatware, so if you don't need them, you can just delete them to free up memory. Coming to the cameras, which are supposed to be the highlight of the device, it has dual back cameras, a 12 megapixel wide angle and a 13 megapixel telephoto lens. At the launch, they really boasted of their camera quality and after testing it, I wasn't disappointed either. The camera is crisp and sharp and has tons of features like the 2x optical zoom and 10x digital zoom. It also has a bokeh effect in the portrait mode. And out of all the phones I have tested that claim to use dual cameras for bokeh, this has delivered stunning results. This is a picture taken with an iPhone X and this is the same picture taken with a Zero 5. Here's another example. You can see how nicely the effect has been achieved by the Zero 5. This is definitely not just a software generated effect. It also has a professional mode where you can play with tons of settings to get the perfect shot. That is if you know how to use them. I don't. All the rest of the features like panorama, night mode, time lapse and all other features fall under the modes tab. The front camera is 16 megapixels and it has all the basic features like beauty mode, wide selfie. Additionally, it also has an LED flash, not just the screen flashing. One interesting thing about the front camera that it also has the bokeh effect and to be honest, it's not that bad at all. In the Blue Boo and Elephone versions which I reviewed earlier, I couldn't achieve this kind of an effect with the dual rear cameras. The 2x optical, 10x digital zoom, the bokeh effect in the front and back cameras add to the list of iPhone X influences. Here are some raw pictures and videos I took with the camera. With appropriate lighting, it is capable of some impressive photography. In some of the images, however, like this one, I feel the color balance is a little off. Even in the dark, the pictures turned out pretty fine and noiseless. The only thing I think limits the camera's full capabilities is the processor, which is a Helio P25 octa-core clocked at 2.6 GHz with 6 GB of DDR4X RAM. I got benchmark scores of more than 62,000 on N22, which is more than a quarter of iPhone X and a little short of Galaxy Note 5. So quarter benchmark scores of iPhone X and quarter the price. Keeping the scores aside, when it actually comes to running heavy apps and games, it can run the heaviest of games pretty smoothly, like Modern Combat 5. I didn't find any lagging or frame skipping yet. Accompanied by features like one-tap memory cleanup and the freezer, you can get some really juicy performance out of it. 
and also 64 GB of built-in memory with an expandable slot should be more than enough for any heavy and light user alike. The battery has been bumped up from 3000 mAh on the previous model to 4350 mAh which takes 2 hours and 15 minutes to charge completely with a quick charging cable provided and I managed to get 52 hours of average use easily out of it including gaming, camera use, browsing etc. And if you put it on ultra saving mode it will more than double the remaining battery time by limiting the app activities of course. It can get a little heated up after about 10 minutes of continuous heavy gaming but that is not very uncommon in these kind of devices. The speaker is quite loud yet clear and not baseless much better than the Blue Boo S1 I reviewed earlier. Basically all aspect. Talking about the design first, it is a pretty big phone similar to the iPhone Plus version. It sports a metallic and finally it offers 802.11 Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2 and 3G and 4G data connections. All in all, I am pretty impressed with the phone. My favorite part is definitely the user interface. It is super user friendly, simple, extremely detailed, customizable and very well developed. I think it is a pretty complete package. It is sleek, stylish, good looking, sharp and true display, good cameras, they perform as expected, the bokeh mode actually performs better than expected. However, based on their emphasis on the cameras in their whole brochure, I was expecting a little more. But maybe that was just me cause the image quality is much better than similar range competition. It has a fast processor, ample storage, a little big for my use but that's just a personal opinion, I'm used to smaller or average size phones. For a price of $260, it is worth every cent. It gets an easy 9 out of 10 of my booth rating. Let me know in the comments below what do you think, is it really an iPhone X on a budget? It is not available on general Chinese e-commerce website so you can just google it to see how you can buy it in your country. I have provided a link to their main website where you can check out the specs in detail. That's it for now guys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button below and subscribe to my booth for more gadget reviews, life hacks and facts. You can also follow me on Facebook and other social media. The links to all of which are in the description box below. Click on the thumbnails to watch my other videos or check out my YouTube channel for more. And as always, thanks for watching.